Time to be a parent. After the recent bombing outside a teen packed Ariana Grande concert in the United Kingdom, the emotional reaction for most of us is to lock our kids inside the house and throw away the key. I'll be honest, I don't even know that it took that concert to get me there. A parent's overriding instinct is to keep their children safe. One Brooklyn father made headlines earlier this week after deliberately overdosing on heroin in an attempt to shock his 23 year old son off of the drug. Is there a too far when it comes to raising and protecting our kids? Dr. Alloway is our resident parenting expert. What advice can you give people, I don't know, I may or may not know a parent, who is so afraid to just let their kids walk out the front door? I think what was really interesting is a recent study was looking at these kind of coping mechanisms. You know, obviously the threat of ther uh, terrorism is very real. And how do men and women, moms and dads, respond differently? And I think that's an important question, not only for the safety of the children, but to the parent themselves, because it affects our stress levels. And we may not even realize that. I think we were just talking about PTSD during the break a little bit. But what they found was really fascinating, that the men tend to react with a much lower level of what they call problem-solving coping and emotional focus uh, so, uh, uh, coping mechanism. So problem-solving is, I'm in a new place, look out, where the exits, gonna get it there. And interestingly, men actually scored lower on this kind of approach. But Meaning they, they don't do that. They don't do that. They don't Truth. use that coping. <laughs> <laughs> but they also, and that may not, this may not be a surprise, but they also scored lower on the emotional based coping, which is, I'm gonna keep my kids home, they're never gonna leave the house, I'm gonna Second do that. Second <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> But what's interesting is that they had less stress as a result. So they, they accepted the risks, which is this can happen, but the frequency or the percentage of this happening is not that great. Um, you know, car accidents, that's much greater. These other risks, that's much greater. So they accepted that and, and they, were, they took precautions, but not unnecessarily so. In contrast, women were high on both those coping mechanisms, which they then reported feeling far more stressful as a result. I believe it. Jeez. Oh, I live it. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I, I can't agree more. All right, well, Dr. Alloway, you have two sons. So as parents, how important is it to sit down and talk to your kids and how much should you be telling them about the kind of tragedies that are happening? I think depending on the age of the child, and really even regardless of the age of the child, they should hear from you first because you want to be as unemotional or non-emotional and as factual as possible rather than them you know, seeing a meme or seeing a, a tweet or a post on social media, let them hear it from someone that they trust. And we know that when we take information from someone that we trust, it's much easier to digest that rather than, you know, a headline that's just coming up at us. So that's the first thing is that you be the one to share that information with them. Well, let me stop you because you're talking about social media and I have an almost nine year old, so she's not even on social media. Mm -hmm. So what is the age? Like, what would you say is an appropriate age to talk to them about the Ari Ariana Grande concert? And I think that depends on their kind of Child. social network. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a nine-year-old is going to talk to their friends who's going to say, did you hear what happened? I have a 10-year-old and a six-year-old, and my 10-year-old has heard about a lot of these events because they talk about it at school. So I think if, you know, before you get to that point, you can say, you know, something bad happened, but I want you to know, and that's kind of leading on to our second point, is the fear versus caution. And fear is important. It's a protective mechanism. If you weren't afraid, we would burn our hands on stovetops. We would try to walk across hot coals and these kinds of things, but we don't because we're afraid of these things. And so, but it's important to recognize that we can't live our lives in fear, but we have to be cautious. And so you could say this just happened, especially if it's in your city, Mm -hmm. or you know it's it's something that's a national event that you know is going to get a lot of coverage and you could say this this happened but i want you to know that the the you know probability of this happening is actually very small and it's like driving a car we get in our car every single day we know that sometimes accidents happen but we take precautions we wear our seat belts we we're safe if it's you know there's the tornado watch we pull over to the side of the road we, we find a safe place and so we want to kind of impart that caution aspect rather than the fear it's terrible, can you believe that? So we want to make sure that our language is changed too when we talk to our children. Okay, one more question though. <laughs> <laughs> to feed off this what you just said, I, this might be a personal one-on-one -on -one consultation We here. can talk later, Maria. Right, but you, so for earlier you talked about social media and some kids aren't on social media. Then you just talked about like watching things on the news. How tragic is it for a parent to not allow their children, like 
my kids are not allowed to watch the news yet. Yeah. Um, is it worse if you keep them in a bubble to where once they are exposed to it a little bit older age, it's like, whoa, what world have I been living in? Like, no. I thought I was in Disneyland. No, I think it's back to this idea of his parents that, you know, you were mentioning earlier. Our job is to protect them, is to keep them safe. And part of that is that visual input that they receive. That visual memory is encoded so much faster than verbal memory. We look at something and in a fraction of a second, we will encode that. So can you imagine mm. seeing those very disturbing images as a nine-year-old, as a six year old or or even a 14 year old you don't it's it's not necessary to expose them to that to explain what has happened well explain you have, you have a, your third take on what you advise parents to do is actually to take a positive action yes so what was that yes yeah, so sometimes children feel out of control they can think now who can I you know if I want to go to a concert is this going to happen what can I do and children feel helpless anyway because they don't have that sense of autonomy as much as adults we tell them a lot of what they need to do so this is one way to give them back that autonomy that control which is really important so we can say look this happened but let's do something positive let's see if our local firefighters need some extra help can we bring extra food can we go to a shelter and, and bring some you know some supplies to help people what can we do that they can do too, mm. you know, to make a difference. So was it best that, so say um, the event that happened, the terror attack in, um, in Manchester. So Ariana Grande had the concert, those kids were, were killed mercilessly, I mean, just awful. And then the kids that didn't, some would have stayed home and been in fear and parents would have, you know, held them back. Mm -hmm. And then others went to the concert and even more, 50,000 people. Yeah. So would it be best for them to jump in and go again? and just get right back on that horse that you fell off of or you know something happened or is it best to stay away and just stay safe and that is a great question so a lot of times when you're looking at phobias and fear conditioning it would be the latter you know it would be that approach of you have to face your fear you have to go to that place and then deal with that but you know when you're working with children it's it's a very different way because their emotions are still forming they're very sensitive the front of the brain that's able to inhibit those negative emotions are still forming too so i think as a parent we need to make a good decision but certainly for adults when they talk about phobia they they do talk about these small baby steps getting you to face your fear by by desensitizing so you're saying I can look at that location now as in a picture now I can maybe stand a mile away and know that that location is, and then kind of you know mm -hmm. go a little bit closer to know that this is what happened but again I would caution that that's a different approach for children we'll grab coffee after this <laughs> so you guys, I told you guys we're gonna need a pen and paper for this it's great advice Dr. Alloway thank you so much for coming and for more information on today's topic and more visit tracyalloway.com Coming up next, finding the perfect place for your